Hello everybody, welcome to Kitab e Club. You know, when we think about current situation, I think so we are going through three major crises. The first one is pandemic, second the climate change, and third is the time of, you know, the amount of time we spend on screens, that is the digital exposure. Here we have authors of this three, this book, The Art of Bitfulness, where they speak about how we can keep calm in the digital world. My authors need no introduction, but let me introduce my authors for the day. Nandan Milkani is the co-founder and chairman of Infosys Technologies Limited. He's the founding chairman of Unique Identification Authority of India. Tanuj is a storyteller who co Um, I think we lost Shweta. Hello, I am Tanuj. I am a storyteller who codes is the uh, introduction that unfortunately keeps going everywhere. What I do is uh, I work in a not-for-profit called uh, iSpirit. It's a tech policy think tank, but that's how I know Nandan. And uh, we ended up writing a book together on our technology. Hey Shweta, I finished yeah. that introduction for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't know oh, what has happened. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I would like to ask you the word bitfulness, the art of bitfulness. Bitfulness is not a very common word. Rather, it's not found in even dictionary. So how did the title uh, happen? Yeah, so maybe I'll start and I'll ask Tanush to add. You know, see, we know about mindfulness. It's about being focused on the moment and so on. And uh, we thought that mindfulness in the digital era could be, a, and so we coined this word called bitfulness. It's also about a bit of mindfulness. It's not that you have to do a lot of it, just a bit is enough. And bit is, you know, very common in technology. So that's what led us to bitfulness and Alas Tanush to add. That's uh, essentially what it is. It's That's how the word came about. But I think uh, Nandan says this better than me, but he says, look, every book, either comes in and says, you know, the big tech companies are bad and you have to go bash them. Or there is a set of books that say, what do you need technology for? You should be, you know, like a monk, live like, you know, you don't need it, sure. let go. And I think both of us, despite our age gap and everything, we are both big fans of technology. We both uh, want the internet. Neither of us wants to give up the internet. We just wish it were a bit better. Um, and then, you know, that's what we are trying to do here, saying that some part of that responsibility is us, some part of it is outside. We're just trying to figure out how to get by. This is a book for the user. It's not about anti-tech or anything. It's about pro-you. And our view is that, especially after the pandemic, uh, Shweta, we have so dramatically increased our dependence, dependence on digital. We, you know, we, we are working from home. We are using our laptops. We are using our screens. We are using our phones. Uh, we are buying on the uh, you know on our devices we are getting food ordered home on our devices we're having entertainment all the time on our devices so we're really spending so much time and also you know when you have many many applications that you use they are all open they're all sending you notifications every second something is piping up and saying i'm here so we live in the age of continuous distraction and uh, we are saying there is actually you can't shut all this off because you need it for your work or for your pleasure but if there are systems that we can have which allow us to use this technology better, then that's what we have in the book. It's not a preachy book. It's not a judgmental book. It's not a book saying that you're weak or strong. It just says it's a very matter of fact, non-judgmental book. These are the things you can do. And we are convinced that if our readers use these uh, techniques, their digital life will be better. Their digital hygiene will be better. They'll be happier and still get more done. Uh, you know, on this, because there is an activity which says about, uh, you know, clean your devices. I deleted over the weekend 25 apps, which I haven't even used on my phone. And although they were not troubling me, but my phone felt lighter to me somehow. Browsing through my phone became so easy. I guess you could, you can somehow see the kind of uh, notes I have put in, in the book while reading the book, because it connects so well with the fact that it is not preachy, which I expected it to be. Tanuj, you were saying something, yeah. No, that's it. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, I mean, look, the, the idea is that, you know, specifically, you you cleaned your uh, phone, you removed the ass, etc. But I think the step to congratulate yourself is that you took charge, right? Like you decided to do something. Because most of us, 
unless you're paying real attention to it, don't really do this. Um, you get a wasteful notification. Most of us will just swipe it once, swipe it away. But if you take like one second longer, if you just press it and hold it, and then you say turn off notifications from this app, you know, that option comes up and then permanently do it. Right? Small things like that uh, also add up and hopefully, you know, you have a much calmer existence. True. Um, peacefully, you know, it becomes less of disturbance, more of work done. At the same time, there are two, uh, you know, two keywords where we talk about segregating your uh, digital usage and there is digital detox, like, you know, just be like the monk, how you started. Why not being like a monk? I mean, what is wrong in digital detox, that is? Well, I think that's completely impractical because I think each one of us, our lives, our work, our pleasure, watching some movie on the streaming platform, our interactions, our communications, everything is done digitally. And therefore, to believe that we can switch off these things and, and sort of go into a monk-like existence is not applicable to most of us. There may be a few people who can do that. But we think also that you need to sort of create the environment of where you are. For example, in the physical world, Shweta, when I go to a library, I know it's very quiet. I read there or write something. I can't talk. I, everybody is very quiet. It's a, it's, a, it's a place where people want you to read. Whereas if I go to a bar or a party, people are loud, they're drinking, they're socializing, they're patting each other on the back and so on. That's a very different world. Or if I go for a walk in the park or run in the park, that's a different world where I'm breathing fresh air, listening to the birds, getting some exercise and so on. So in the physical world, when we go into different environments, we know instinctively that that environment requires you to behave differently. The problem in the digital world is that they're all mixed up in one device. And therefore, we don't know <coughs> So what we do. And the two of us do it differently. I do. We have three states that we think are important. Create, curate, and communicate. And I do this through different devices. For example, I do all my work on my laptop. And that's what create is about. Create is about sitting down and writing an article or looking at a spreadsheet, in your case, maybe looking at the book of accounts of a company or whatever that you do as the CA. And uh, so that is work which requires concentrated attention. And I do it always on my laptop at my table with my good lighting and just sit down. And when I sit down there, I know I'm ready to work and I keep all my other devices aside. So there's no interruptions. When I want to read something important or I want to just browse the internet, or I just want to watch a movie on Netflix or Disney Hotstar or Prime or whatever, I use my iPad. So my, when I pick up my iPad, I know that I'm in that mode. We call that mode as the curation mode. And I use my phone only for communication. So I only use it to call people, receive calls, send and receive messages. I don't use any social media except Twitter where, again, I use that to broadcast an article I've written or something like that. I don't get into, you know, a lot of people get into arguments on Twitter. I stay away from that. So I have a simple philosophy of laptop for creation, iPad for curation, mobile phone for communication. And when I pick up that device, I know that's all I'm going to do. And so the, the, just like the physical world has the queue, the, the party or the park or the library, the digital world also I'm creating queues, but that's my approach. But as Tanuj knows, everybody can't have three devices. So how do you do this one with one device is actually the bulk of the book in terms of how do you create different profiles and IDs. So Tanuj, you want to add that? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll uh, uh, so, you know, segregation question, we'll get into this uh, deeper. I also want to address the question that you asked that, you know, why is digital detox bad, etc. I think we started, uh, we start the book also with an example, uh, with a story, real story of uh, Prabhkiran, um, who had to take a digital detox inadvertently. He <laughs> didn't intend to do it, but it happened. He enjoyed it thoroughly in the moment and immediately after. And uh, in a few weeks, maybe things just went back to exactly where they are. Right? It's like saying that it's like a crash diet, right? Like if you do a crash diet. If you really kill yourself and don't eat and like eat only this much time and I'll eat only this much, uh, you know, in a way that you can't actually, uh, you've done no lifestyle change, you've done no habit change. The moment you hit a goal or do something or it's been 30 days, you go back to exactly what made you fat in the first place. 
right? How, you tell me how that sounds to you, like it will actually solve anything. Because to me, it sounds like it will never do. Um, so that's that's kind of opinion on digital detox, which is that uh, I think we lost Shweta again. So we'll continue on that uh, digital detox idea, which is that um, you know it's 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 kind of impossible. Um, that if you if you became frustrated with the devices and you wanted a digital box in the first place, if the habits that led you there, if the phone and the way it's configured, your laptop, the way it's configured, if those are not changing, then uh, I, I really doubt, I think I both play on this, I really doubt that it will work uh, because you did a detox and go back, now you'll be calmer on that. So that's the question at the top. On specifics on whether how to split it on software and etc., I can get into it and I'll talk for a very long time. But uh, instead, we'll uh, let your readers ask if they're specifically interested in that question, or hopefully buy our book and you know, we'll see it there. Uh, there is a lot of mention about you know how you can plan set of multiple VPNs, uh, some of which I am trying to incorporate, but a lot of that I would need your help with. At the same time, you know, you both represent technology if i take your name it is synonymous with technology was there a hitch in mind when you started writing the book that okay we are going to say that now limit the technology so was there a hitch in mind while you were writing the book or while thinking about uh, the entire concept of bitcoin yeah so let, let me give you some background both on ourselves and on the book i think both of us are huge believers in the positive transformation capabilities of technology. That's what we've been working on for decades. And this could be technology to transform companies to become more efficient and more effective to give consumers a better experience. Or it could be technology at the governance level like Aadhaar and UPI where I was an advisor, which is to transform the experience for a billion Indians. So we are big believers and we continue to believe in technology as, a, as one of the important things we have to change the world. But what has happened in the sort of the consumer world of these apps, which are driven a lot by the attention economy and the need to have digital advertising, we have created a situation where people, if they're not careful, can spend an inordinate amount of time on these applications, switching from so it's really that aspect that we're addressing. So while we are big believers in technology, we also believe that we must practice digital hygiene. I mean, I may be a great, you know, I may like my food, but that doesn't mean I should gorge myself every day, right? So it's about finding that balance. And what happened during the pandemic, uh, Shweta, was that, you know, for a long time, we were all locked down. And then after the lockdown was partially lifted, I could go for walks in the park. So what I decided was that every time I went for a walk in the park, I would do it with one of my friends and we would both wear masks and it's open air. So it was quite safe. So Tanuj was one of the persons with whom I did the walk in the park. And we were discussing this digital world and we both realized that this was one of the issues we had, which is why we believe greatly in the technology. This kind of excessive uh, addiction was not a good thing. And that's what led to the book, uh, Sweta. Tanuj? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I don't think it's it's too much of a stretch to be both pro technology and at the same time be like, hey, uh, maybe not so much. Uh, in fact, if anything, um, I think the people who say that you learn nothing from a from a like a Twitter or an Instagram or whatever are the ones who have it wrong, because uh, I personally have made friends online. I've had. Uh, you know, a lot of the things I'm into and have helped me in life have been learned online, etc. So I personally think the problem is not um, that you know technology is one bucket. You know, it's one broad stroke through which you can paint everything. Is not is not the way to look at it. It's that, um, like we said in the book, are you aligning your attention and your intention? So if if I came online or even if I went to an Instagram to get inspired, maybe sometimes like for me, yeah. um, in the middle when I was doing exercise and whatever, I followed a lot of like exercise gym account sector, right? So for me, it was just like seeing that, seeing somebody sweat it out, seeing even the people who are like much more fitter than me say that this is tiring, you know, whatever. Those things were good. They were useful. I had no practical purpose. I didn't learn anything. It's not productive, but it was useful to keep, keep at it, keep your determination at it. Um, if somebody had come and said, oh, you're wasting your time entirely and like, don't even look at Instagram, just keep at it in the gym. That's also bad. That's also wrong advice, right? So I, I, I want to, you know, want to sort of 
Nandan has already said enough in, about how he's looking at it. I just want to give a personal example to say that. You know, it's it's okay. important to have these things. It's, some of my friends, I wouldn't even know what's happening in their lives, right? If not for uh, these mediums. Yeah. So very true. And at the same time, you know, the book very clearly says that even if you're going to a distraction space, define your why's. Defining why you are there would let you make the most of your digital time or your screen time, whether you're using it for leisure or for your work or for otherwise also. Um, very true. At the same time, you know, uh, with the advent of metaverse, now the technology is going to be more immersive. There are going to be several other ways wherein uh, you know, we are going to be engaged in different uh, types of apps or uh, streaming platforms. So how we can maintain the digital boundaries? Is it, a, uh, is it a weekly process that we do or is it something as a clean, healthy lifestyle we need to follow? Well, you know, I think whatever are the, we have written in the book, the systems are equally well applied to a metaverse because what the metaverse will do ultimately is create a much more immersive kind of uh, world where we can actually be present as an avatar or be with our friends or be in a business meeting. And the same principle, same principles will apply. At the same time, it only further reinforces the need to find a balance between the physical world and the digital world. Because, you know, I think all of us have to find that balance while we want to be in the metaverse, we also want to be out there in the real world. And we are finding that, right? After the two years of the pandemic, many, many people are saying, I want to go out, I want to travel, I want to see things, I want to meet people. Uh, and so I think uh, it's all about finding the balance. And metaverse becomes one more attraction for us, both from a work and play point of view. It's up to us to carve out the boundaries like we have defined in the book and follow those boundaries. Yeah. I mean, if if, uh, if the metaverse ever is open and they allow you to make apps or whatever, the first app I would make uh, would be a watch, right? Because the first thing they do is they don't let you get a sense of time. All of these things, especially when you put on that VR headset and you're you're actually going there, is um, you know they're designed so that you're fully like when they say immersed and immersive. Um, maybe another word for this is essentially that you know they they don't want you thinking about. The clock they don't want you thinking about what you should be doing and how your time should be going um and honestly it's not a very hard thing to ask for just a clock uh, so you know there are it's, it, technology solutions will help us manage our technology problems that's one of the things we say in the book also that you can't bring a knife to a gunfight right you can't make a law that says facebook you must limit everybody to 15 minutes because what if there's some doctor learning so some you know doctor in a remote um, uh, like a low middle income country learning surgery through a VR headset, right? learning some important medical thing. To it could be great use. You could have improvements in healthcare in these countries through this technology, right? So, and I, I would think that, uh, like Nandan is saying, we have to be able to set boundaries, but more importantly, we should be allowed to set boundaries on their end also, right? Like having a watch, for example. And stuff like that and we should talk about these things now before it becomes the standard that you don't have it okay. i mean being busy on your phone on your device for example when you are uh, sitting on the dinner table is definitely a distraction nobody likes but at the same time you know when we were um, circulating this topic across the book club there was one common uh, observation i made everybody said that to do this or to do a social cutoff from the digital when you are out or you know not using social media that much, you need to be at a certain level, then only this becomes implementable. What would you say to that? No, no I think that's a false uh, notion. I mean, obviously, many people say that you can afford to do this because, you know, if, you, if yeah. you're not on Instagram, it doesn't matter to you. And while that is true, I think uh, if you look at the practices in the book, they apply to everyone. and. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that Tanuj and I uh, have an age gap of more than 30 years. And he's a millennial and I'm like this old guy. And uh, at the same time, and he needs to be on WhatsApp. He needs to be on Instagram. But he has also figured out that if he adopt these rules, uh, he's able to, uh, you know, be calmer and more productive and happier. So it applies to everyone. 
And in fact, if, even if you are a 21 year old and you are on all these platforms, you can still figure out a way of life which keeps you calmer, more beautiful, uh, more productive, happier, uh, just by adopting some of the simple rules in the book. So I don't agree that it's just for people who already achieved it and therefore can afford to do all this. Yeah, I think we start by saying don't cut off. I mean, it's, it's even in this conversation, we never say that. I mean, and the other thing we're not prescriptive when we said non judgmental book is that was, you know, if your job is social media, uh, I would imagine that you need to be on social media at least four hours a day, right? Maybe you need to be, do it. But then uh, this does happen to people who work in social media because I spoke to a lot of people who work in social media sector also to like figure out, you know, whether our advice, what we're saying works, etc. And complaints are similar, right? Because your job requires you to be on social media and you've not thought about how to separate your work mindset and what you're doing from work from your personal thing. You are on Instagram, which means that you were supposed to be there for work, but now you're checking out your friend's update. You're seeing the latest meme. You're, you're, you're writing Dogla Pan Hai on everything and sending it, you know. So... Um, I find, so, for example, when, like, you, you know, I assume you practice uh, CA. When you're sitting down and going through the books of accounts of a company, if you keep your phone next to you and keep getting hundreds of notifications, you'll not be able to work with full focus. It's better that you keep the device away. So, uh, you know, and you know, it, it's not that, and you can set expectations. You can, you know, it's not that you have to give an instant like on everything that you see. So I think once your digital behavior is established and your friends and colleagues know that, and also it's good to have different profiles for different people. So example, you may have a, a group, of, an ID meant only for your business colleague, where you'll have one particular way of dealing with them. You may have a, another, uh, another group of your intimate friends and family, where you'll be a very different personality. And you may have a third ID where you receive public information. So I think these are all just techniques to sort of segregate your life. And um, I'll, I'll build on that because since we have time and so for your readers, if people are actually commenting, I would like to say this, that uh, I, two things. One is you would think that, okay, segregation is some sort of act of organizing. It's not organizing. It's becoming calmer because look, let's suppose right now I'm very angry at something, something very deeply personal or whatever, right? Uh, maybe something even at work and this and that, right? Like some colleague of mine has done something that I don't like. Um, I can't go to like a public social media account and write about this, whatever, right? And Or I'll call up a friend or somebody, you know, like, and those, everyone, all of us are busy. But if you've created an account, which is like an, what they call an alt account, and this is, we, you know, both Nandana and I learned this from people younger than us who are native to social media. So the Gen Z's all have like a Finsta, fake Insta, right? Which is, which is the, you know, there's one Insta version, which is the polished version that everybody who knows your real name types in sees, and in that you're like, you know, only going to like fancy weddings and you know restaurants and doing that. And there's another Instagram where you're like weird, right? Like I like, oh look, you know, oh look what an idiotic thing I did, or you know, or whatever, or like I'm this, etc. And the the benefit of it is that, you know, when you have a thought that you know is controversial or whatever, and if, if I just put it on my main account, you know, who knows what will happen? You can go to the other place and share it. If you have some like personal, deeply personal update, like you know, something with your family or kids or whatever that you know. Tomorrow you don't want going anywhere else. You can share in different places. It's just very useful. It's not just organizing. It's not just productivity. Uh, it's very deeply calming. Um, and the second thing I want to say is, look, it's a fear, right? Like if you are, it's like, uh, you know, alcohol. People who have an addiction will be like, oh, but if I don't drink alcohol, I'm not fun at any party. Or, you know, like, or, look, everything. My mom was afraid of escalators, you know, so in the I used to go and she's like, oh, I can't do it. You guys are young. You can do it. Or there's something about me which stops me from being going on that escalator, uh, uh, right? Like the stairs. And what is the proven method in science of any fear, overcoming any fear is what's called exposure therapy, which means that you have to actually do it maybe in tiny bits and then increase. So if you have a fear of missing out, just miss out for a bit and, you know, the world will not end. That's a fabulous example that the world won't end. It's all in your head. And I totally understand that. I I do uh, need to share something with you that uh, by the end of the book, there is a particular link which says that if you are done reading the book, go through the link. And I went on the main website and looked for the entire tabs. Like literally 10 minutes, I was looking for that link. 
and I couldn't find that link on the website. And uh, you know, by the time I thought that this has missed out, it was just printed in the book, and it is not on the main website of Bitcoin Nest. But there is a link at the end of the book which you find and you read and you read the entire process. What is your th thought about uh, you know the book? Why we should uh, put up what we understood or what we learned from the book? And that is amazing. It adds so much value to me as a reader. It was simply amazing that there is no main tab for the particular link. But if you give a second more, you will type it out, and uh, it is amazing the way it is done. So uh, I'll take I this. Uh, be, be the reader in me yeah. went so happy because of it. So I was just going to tell you a little thing, and hope you uh, know, let's. Uh, sorry, is there a sync problem? Can you hear me? Should I? Shut up. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you very well. Yeah, yeah, I can sorry, hear. I think there's a. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I was saying that look, we. Uh, you know, if you it, it's in the acknowledgement section, and we were told, uh, you know, by our uh, editors and other stuff at Penguin that uh, nobody reads acknowledgements, right? People don't read all the way to the end, like all the way to the last word of the book. Okay. Um, so we decided that uh, you know people who read, and because that section to us is most important, because we are thanking the people who helped us make this book a reality. Um, so the people who actually read all the way. You know, we thought that we'll add a little bonus for them. Um, if you go to that website and you put in your email, uh, I check this once every uh, two weeks or so. We because there's a lot of income we gather it, and um, for the first few people who do it, we have a gift going. So we actually send them something. So if you've gone to the website, I don't know if you have an email address, or, um, but um, you know, every week we send out. <laughs> we we also Nandan and I have been holding. Uh, sort of these private sessions with the readers through that page that uh, it's him, uh, me and like just a few readers uh, we'll get who've come in through that link and we have sessions with them to understand how the book affected them, what feedback and a lot of what we tell you today now has improved based on that feedback from those sessions, etc. cetera. Um, so now if you've uh, heard of this, I, I hope this just doesn't become too much of a secret. We don't have enough things to give away, but we do uh, a few. Um, so yeah, that's that's the intent, exactly. and that was, that's why I didn't even mention about the link. Yeah, yeah I, true, I, I, true. If this uh, this video goes viral. I don't know what we'll do. Not be able to give up. To <laughs> I will enter my email ID first again. Then I'll make sure that the video goes. Sure. Okay, I I don't know. Uh, somehow today my network is playing a trick. I guess with two technology giants, uh, the network is not able to handle the excitement, and it's uh, it's just going bizarre. At the same time, there is just one last thing I would say that the book is available on Kindle also. You can read it on e platform. But for a book like this, I genuinely re recommend a hardbound book. I genuinely recommend making your notes, coming to the chapters time and again because it is value adding. On this weekend when I completed the book, I did a lot of changes on my Monday and I feel more relaxed and uh, I'm happy. And my uh, my devices are not giving me any trouble at this point and they are more cleaner. So with this, thank you so much, sir. And uh, I, I will see what I'll get on my mailbox then. Okay, great. Thank you. Bye-bye, yeah. Shweta. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, Thank you.